All right, part two of reviewing this telescope. I had made a video the other night and lost all my video. Set the telescope up and I was going to take 250 shots of the Triffid Nebula. And I set it up, went to bed. When I came back out, the skies were cloudy. Well, I lost 150 of them images, and out of the 100 that I had left, I only had 76 good ones. Mm -hmm. It was just a bad night. Well, all the video I took on my camcorder, something happened to the SD card, I lost all that video. I guess in astrophotography, you're going to have them bad nights. It's just going to happen. But anyway, I'm going to show you. I did add some weight to this telescope. I got a five pound weight, I set it right here. That helped stabilize it a little. Plus I added a little shim right here because it looked like the tube was twisting, which it was when I put the shim in there, that stabilized it a little bit. And uh, the number one complaint that I have with this so far is every single time I cut it on, I have to set the date and the time. And it's getting so aggravating. You think with technology today, they'd put a little watch battery or something in there to keep the time on this thing, where I wouldn't have to set it every single time I use it. Uh, that's about the only complaint I got so far. Uh, tonight I'm going to try to do the fireworks galaxy, and I'm going to try to do the bubble nebula. If the weather holds out, I still see a few clouds. It's supposed to clear off, but... It was supposed to be clear the other night and I lost it. So anyway, I'll I'll finish setting up and then as soon as it gets dark, I'll line it up and then I'll do a go-to and show you how it goes right to the target. That's the best part of this scope is it goes right to the target. If you do astrophotography and you have just a star tracker, which I have a star tracker, and you have to find your own objects in the sky, it can get aggravating. You take pictures, nothing. Take pictures, nothing. But anyway, I like the go-to part of it. So that's helping me out a bunch. But anyway, let's get started on this. As soon as it gets dark, I'll start the imaging. Be back to you. Okay, I've slewed to my target. I have the fireworks galaxy in the target. But the way it's positioned, I have a bad feeling that the scope may hit the mount before I get a whole bunch of data, but I'm going to start taking pictures. And maybe, uh, maybe I can get enough of something. And let's see. It did go right to it. I didn't have no problem slewing to it. It wasn't exactly center, but it went a long way, so... Also, uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Trevor from Astro Backyard for the fan idea to help keep the dew down and maybe keep things a little cooler. It's not real bad tonight. It's not real hot. so ho I'm hoping for the best. I'm going to take a few of these frames on the uh, Fireworks Galaxy and then I'm going to switch over to the Bubble Nebula and we'll see how it works out. When I slew to the bubble nebula, I'll, I'll take a video of that so you can see how it goes. It's a pretty quiet little mount. You can't hear it running. So, Oh, I had to move the hand control because where it was hitting on the back, there was a little bit of light getting in the back of the scope messing my exposures up. So not a little issue, but it, it didn't work out. All right, I'm going to get started. Okay, I just finished up my... 100 frame, 100 frames on uh, the fireworks galaxy, and I'm fixing to slew it to the bubble nebula. But as you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's getting foggy. There's some clouds building, and the dew has fell really heavy. I don't know if you can see it on the telescope or not, but. It's on everything. 
and I think it's fogging up my mirror a little. I'm gonna have to check. I'm gonna try to do something, but anyway, that's I'm fixing to slew it to the bubble nebula, and I'll show you how it slews. If I can do all this at one time, let's see. I'm gonna hit the enter. And there it goes. Well, it didn't go far. So it wasn't too far away from the galaxy. I'm going to check my mirror for fog or dew. Start taking some frames. Man, there is dew on everything. The mirror don't look too bad. It's not bad at all. Could use a cleaning, but let me check my secondary mirror. I got some dew on it, it looks like. Anyway, I'm going to try it and see what happens. A little bit of fog blowing around. It's starting to cloud up. I had a bright moon. Anyway, let's give it a shot. There we go. Alright, let me just start by saying last night was not the best night for imaging. It's pretty rough. Moon is about half full. I had humidity. I had fog. I had all I had clouds. But I tried anyway. I I got some images of the fireworks galaxy, not a whole bunch, and they ain't that great. It is what it is, but at least I did get out and try. Uh, when I went to slew to the bubble nebula, it slewed over to it, and then as I was take, I tried to take some frames. I didn't see it in the in the frame, and I thought, well. I've either kicked the tripod or a wire got hung while it was slewing and it didn't make it all the way or something. I, I just didn't know. Well, I did a star alignment again and then some clouds rolled in. I had to wait and then I slewed over to the Lagoon Nebula and there was clouds there but it, it found the target. So I said, okay, it's on. So I slewed back to the Bubble Nebula and it was not in the frame and I thought what is going on what is going on well come to find out it was in the frame I just didn't see it there was so much light pollution from the moon that it was just barely coming through and I just didn't see it and uh, it, it got really aggravating and then I when I looked inside the, the telescope it was the mirrored fogged up and and I tried everything to keep it from fogging up. I, on a refractor, you just put the dew heater on and you don't have no problems, but I'm not sure what to do on this yet. I'm still trying to figure it out. Uh, and I found out that the bubble nebula is not very big. Not as big as I thought it was. And uh, the fireworks galaxy was tiny, so this doesn't have much. It's only 650 millimeters, so it wasn't all in the image. I use a field of view calculator on my phone. I don't know if you can see that. And it showed it shows the bubble nebula. I don't know if you can see that or not. But it shows the bubble nebula fitting in my frame pretty good. This is a pretty good, it's usually dead on. And like I said, I think it was in there. I just didn't have a long enough exposure, and I just wasn't seeing it. But uh, this is a pretty good app. You just put your you put. It's got your telescope in there. It's got this telescope in there. It's got my camera in there, and you select your target, and then it'll show you what it's going to look like in the frame. So, pretty good app. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to put that fireworks galaxy on here, which is not impressive at all not a press of all and I'll put the Triffid nebula on there nebula on there that I didn't 
get any video of the other night, but I did get an image. I'll put that on there. As far as this thing taking astrophotography, I think it's going to work. I just need a good night to do it. You know how astrophotography is. It never works out the way you want it to. It's rare if it does. But anyway, I'll put the images on there and I'll let you see for yourself what you think. Uh, the Triffid Nebula turned out pretty good for no more frames than I had, so we'll go ahead and try it. I'll, I'll put them on there and see what you think. All right.